Please join us to the, for the call to worship. We stand before the city of the living God. Hear the song of God's children. Hear the voice of the one who speaks from heaven. The voice of the Lord shakes the earth and echoes through the cosmos. God's kingdom is unshakable 
a rock that cannot be moved. The Lord is our refuge. God's kingdom stands forever. Give thanks to the Lord. We worship together to praise our God. Grace to you in peace in the name of God, our Creator, and Christ, our Redeemer. We greet you whether you're here in the nave, whether you're listening on the radio, or whether you're watching on the live stream now or sometime in the future. It is a gift to have with us this morning Dr. Mark Brummett. Mark Brummett is the, uh, the professor of Hebrew Bible at Colgate Rochester Crozer Divinity School and newly appointed as the assistant dean of students for that auspicious school, and we are glad to have you with us today. 
Let us practice greeting him later by greeting one another with signs of peace. The peace of Christ be with you. join me in our responsive prayer of confession. Gracious God, you have known us since the beginning of time. You know when we struggle to hear your voice and when we yearn to know your grace. Speak to us with wisdom and love and protect us with mercy and grace. Heal us and set us free that we may recognize your presence, heed your call, and celebrate your loving acceptance. Hear the good news. The gracious love of Christ sets us free. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Please be seated. And I would invite forward the Cernowski family at this time. Hi. Beloved, 
<laughs> Baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which grace we become partakers of his righteousness and heirs of life eternal. Those receiving the sacrament are thereby marked as Christian disciples and initiated into the fellowship of Christ's holy church. Our Lord has expressly given to little children a place amongst the people of God which holy privilege must not be denied them. So, beloved, do you, in presenting your child for holy baptism, confess your faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Do you therefore accept as your bounden duty and privilege to live before your child a life that becomes the gospel, to exercise all godly care that he be brought up in the Christian faith, that he be taught the Holy Scriptures, that he learn to give reverent attendance upon the private and public worship of God? And will you endeavor to keep your child under the ministry and guidance of the church until he, by the power of God, shall accept for himself the gift of salvation and be confirmed as a full and responsible member of Christ's holy church? Then we invite you forward at this time. And by what name shall this child be baptized? Camden Asher. I baptize you today in the name of God the Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. I mark you this day before God and neighbor as a child of God. Let's go meet some people here. Hamden, this is your church family. I was here when your mommy and daddy walked down this aisle and walked back out again as a married couple. These are the people who in just a moment are going to commit to walk alongside you through the journey of life. So that should you stumble or should you fall, as happens to the best of us, we will be here to help get you on your feet again. And all that we'd ask is that if we stumble or if we fall, as sometimes happens, you might help us find our way so that as you continue to grow in wisdom and in years, we might learn from you as you learn from us. This time we invite the congregation to stand. Brothers and sisters of the household of faith, we commend to your love and care Camden Asher, whom we this day recognize as a member of the family of God. Will you endeavor so to live that Camden Asher may grow in the knowledge and love of God the Father through our Savior, Jesus Christ? With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that this child, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Let us pray. O oh God, grant that Camden Asher, as he grows in years, may also grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So guide and uphold Mike and Meg, that by loving care, wise counsel, and holy example, they may each be led into that life of faith whose strength is righteousness and whose fruit is everlasting joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Today's scripture reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey for the, from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Throughout the Gospels, we hear how Jesus explicitly welcomed the children unto him, and in that same spirit, we welcome the children forward for a children's time at this time. Children are always welcome to stay with us in the worship service, but for those who might like, ages 4 through 5th grade, we have a special enrichment program with Miss Holly and Miss Paula immediately following the service. Come on down. Does anybody here have rules in their house? You have rules? Okay, what are some of the rules that you have to follow? What's one of your rules? You cannot break anything. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one, yes? No mean words. That's a really good one. Emma, what's one of yours? No hugging your dog too much, let's say, yes. Okay. No sneaking desserts? Yes, that's a good one. Understood. Anything else? Yes, Audrey? No what? No food in your room. Okay, I got it, I got it. Anything else? I think I can live in most of your house. Yes. No eating 10 chocolate chip cookies, right? 11 okay? Okay. All right, so just trying to be uh, thoughtful about everything we're eating. So. We live in a world that has some rules. There are some good rules, right? Rules that we have to follow for some, from time to time. Like, what are some rules that you know that are probably good for all of us to abide? Yes. Breathe. Remember to breathe. I mean, I guess that's kind of a rule, but maybe it's like also a, just a thing that we need to do. Yes. Yeah. Remember to drink plenty of water. Oh, you, you guys are so good. Or like stop at a stop sign, right? Or look both ways before crossing the street. All of those things are true, right? Well, Jesus in our story was teaching in a synagogue on a Sabbath, right? So let's say it was a Sunday. We're in the middle of church and things are going pretty well. And all of a sudden, a woman came up to him, and she was bent over because she was so sick, and she'd been so sick for so long. Now, one of the rules that was around at that time was that Jesus was supposed to just keep going, right? He was supposed to not do any other work on the Sabbath day. But what do you think Jesus did when he saw a woman in need? What would you do if you saw someone in need? Help them, yes, yeah, right? What do you think, Sean? Make them feel better, right? And so Jesus saw this woman and he said, I can't just let her be sick and unwell, and I know it's the Sabbath day, and I know one of the rules is to do no work, but here's somebody who is so sick and unwell that I'm going to help her. And so he broke a rule for the sake of someone else, and everyone got upset. And they were really mad at Jesus. And Jesus finally sat down to tell them that part of what we're supposed to do is pay attention to the people around us. And the first rule that all of us have to follow is to love one another. And if we can't do that, then none of the other rules matter. So if there's ever a moment in our life when we're faced with a decision between two rules, Stop for a second and ask yourself, what would help me love the other person better? Maybe that's the lesson that Jesus came to teach us. Can we give thanks to God for that as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think I know her, this woman bent double. I think I know her, but it's hard to be sure. We only glimpse her, see a posture rather than a person. But the moment she stands and starts singing praises, our attentions are directed elsewhere. But I do think I know her, this woman bent double. She went to the church I attended as a child, there at the back in her well-cushioned chair, bent over as if bearing the weight of the world bent over as if permanently in prayer. Perhaps we all know her, or have glimpsed her at least, this woman bent double, getting around with a walker or a chair. Perhaps we all know her and wonder how she manages her whole body spells out every struggle she must endure. In this gospel story, in fact, she has neither history nor name. Where she is bent over so that we don't 
even get to see her face. She is indeed the very embodiment of struggle. Bent over by a spirit, the gospel writer tells us, bound by Satan, to use Jesus' words. In so many ways, her body illustrates, declares even, the experience of all of us, the very weight of living in the world, the very weight of the world. It is written in all our bodies, albeit often in subtler ways. Some few weeks ago, I went to a wedding in London, the town I come from, hence the way I speak. A college friend was getting married, and she and I used to run the King's College Gilbert and Sullivan Society together way back when. There were several of us still firm friends from those days at that wedding. A yum-yum here, a cocoa there, a smattering of HMS Pinafore sailors, and I'm sure I saw one or two gondoliers. <laughs> yes, we were the geeky set. Freshmen and enthusiasts. And we still are enthusiasts, but maybe not quite so fresh women and men anymore. A few more pounds, some of us. A few more gray hairs, certainly me. Our greetings tell a longer story, albeit in fewer words. Our smiles still treasure those shared experiences. Our eyes now treasure greater cares. We don't dance as late as we used to, and we can't drink as we once did, which is probably a good thing. I am in a Methodist church. And I, for one, can't seem to get off a chair without making at least some audible groan. And the button that popped off after all the eating at that wedding, well, it just had to stay on the floor. Woman, you are set free from your ailment, Jesus tells the one belt bent double. He lays his hands on her and immediately she stood up straight and began praising God, the gospel writer explains. I wonder about that immediately. I wonder if there weren't just at least a few groans, first of pain, then of relief, or even a few creaks and clicking bones, first stiff, now released. In the resurrection faith of the writer, body and spirit are freed together. The one is not liberated from the other, rather the once bent over body of the woman is raised in praise. Now aside from a few short hours following a visit to a masseuse or a chiropractor, you and I may have to wait a while for the full experience, for the fullness of resurrection, that is, when, to quote Paul, this whole world, still groaning for salvation, will raise in praise. I think I know her, this woman bent double. I think I know her, but it's hard to be sure, not least because I don't see her face, just her posture. She has no name, no history apart from a case history, some spinal problem. So she is remembered as little more than an X-ray and a miracle. To one onlooker, the religious authority at that time and place, 
she is little more than a test case. And not even she, not even her x-ray, the miracle itself, lift that onlooker out of history and place him in our midst today, and he'd be saying, now don't be holding clinics on Sundays. No healings, please. Don't you know that Sundays are for church? Church, I tell you, not life-giving ministries. Oh, no. And his spirit weighs on us again right here in this place where resurrection is proclaimed, where freedom from oppression was proclaimed each Sabbath back in Jesus' own day, and weighed down, bent over again, we groan with all creation for salvation once more. Why is it, I wonder, that traditions which began in response to the life-giving, liberating actions of God become so strict and officious quite so soon? Is it the desire to hold on to an experience, to preserve it, to honor it, ironically enough, to keep it alive that drives our efforts to shut it down and police it? Whatever the cause, the effect weighs on us all. And to paraphrase Paul, admittedly loosely, that which was born in a spirit of freedom ends up binding us and weighing us down. Perhaps that onlooker, that religious authority, believed that we should only attend to the spirit on Sunday, that to heal the body is an indulgence, too much like pleasure to be praise. But in the resurrection faith of the writer, body and spirit work together, and indeed, so uh, there is no freedom from the spirit that does not seek physical and indeed social freedom as well. In line with the prophets of old, the gospel writer reminds us that there is no praising where there is ongoing oppression. Do not be going to church to sing on Sundays if you pass injustice on your way. The prophet Amos once declared, you'll only look a fool. Worse, you'll convict yourselves over and again. Check it out, Amos 4. In such circumstances, the only appropriate song to sing is a lament of repentance and remorse. Praise is for those who know themselves freed from oppression. Praise is for those whose complicity with oppression is no more. I think I know her, this woman bent double. I think I know her, but it is hard to be sure. We only glimpse her, see a posture rather than a person. But she stands and departs singing praises. She has been raised by the one who at once refuses to be bound, even while accepting the weight of the world. The one who knows that Sabbath spells freedom from every kind of slavery. The one who knows that this freedom is inseparable from Resurrection Day. Amen.
Gracious, loving God, we open our hearts to you. Hear our prayers. We pray today and every day for everyone who needs to feel your grace, for all who are lonely, for all who are in unhealthy and unsafe situations, for those whose lives did not turn out as they had hoped or planned. We pray for your beloved children who are in deep and excruciating pain, for those who are imprisoned, defeated, and in despair. We pray for ways to help where there is need, and we ask your loving presence within and around all who are suffering in body, mind, and soul. We pray for those who have come through their struggles, those whose lives now feel ordinary after a trauma or tragedy. Breathe your sacred healing breath into each life, whether or not we are suffering, reminding us that we all need your presence and your grace. We pray for everyone who is beginning something new, school, work, relationship, life. Settle into their hearts that they may know you as a part of their everyday chores, tasks, and joys. Fill us with compassion, enliven us with joy, gentle us when we need it, show us rest when we are weary. Make our words your words, make our heart your heart. Make our breath your breath. Amen. If you are visiting with us this morning, we want to take this moment to extend you a special welcome to say we're really glad that you're here. Asbury First is not a perfect place, but we recognize that we are more perfect with you than we are without you. And so we'd invite you to join us in our mission to love God and neighbor, to live fully, to serve all, and repeat until we get it right. We'd also invite you to join us in signing that red Ritual of Friendship tablet, which you'll find towards the center of your aisle. Respectfully, we'd ask that everyone signs that we might recognize your presence among us this morning. If you've noticed that some people have fancy name tags, you may also have one. Simply go to the welcome desk or go online. We'll have one ready for you within just a couple of weeks. There is so much happening within the life of the church as we get ready to start up our fall programmatic year. Please note that next week will be the last week of the summer schedule of services. So we have two services next week, 8.30 and 10 o'clock, and then we switch back to 8.30, 10, and 11. So you'd be good if you came at 10 o'clock or 8.30, but just know it will be slightly different than what you're experiencing right now. 
So please note your calendar for September 8th is when we return to that full fall schedule and uh, look in your bulletins for some of the opportunities there are for engagement, whether it's to join one of the musical ensembles or whether it's to take a, a step into a class this year or to join a small group. We would love to have you find your way of volunteering or being a part of this congregation in a meaningful way to you. With all of that said, we consider for a moment all that God has given us as we give something back to God as the ushers wait on us for our morning tithes and offerings.
Holy Spirit, bless these gifts with the power of your love and grace, that others may recognize your presence and hear your wisdom and truth. Amen. I want to say another word of thank you to Dr. Mark Brummett for being with us this morning. I pray that you will have a moment to greet him in the gathering center following the service. Take this as a benediction. Go now in the name of Jesus Christ to do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the times you can, in all the places you can, to all the people you can, so long as ever you can. Go in the name of Jesus Christ and do more good. Amen. Hooray.